blinding snow, wind shields near zero in an all-out blizzard, temperatures near 100, scorching sun with wilting humidity. Those are examples of weather, the state of the atmosphere at a given place in time. Climate considers prevailing weather conditions over a long period of time, usually at least 30 years of averaged out weather. Both weather and climate are driven by the unequal heating of the earth by the sun. Since the sun heats the tropics a lot more than the poles, Earth's atmosphere and oceans have to get things back in balance by moving warmth toward the poles and cold air toward the equator. Weather is just what we call all those motions in the atmosphere that move the energy around. Now our big blue marble is about 93 million miles away from the sun. Much of the heat we get from our sun would escape right back out into space if it weren't for what's in our atmosphere. That thin little skin of air contains greenhouse gases, carbon dioxide among them, that trap a lot of the sun's warmth close to the Earth's surface. In the same way the inside of a greenhouse is warmer than the air around it, Earth is warmer because of the carbon dioxide that has always been in our atmosphere. Without this global greenhouse effect, let's just say life would be a lot more challenging. Earth's average temperature would be close to zero degrees Fahrenheit instead of about 59 degrees now, though that number is rising. Now, here's some really simple science in what can be a complicated subject. Carbon dioxide in the atmosphere warms the planet, and for about the last 150 years, we've been adding carbon dioxide to our atmosphere, as measured by this graph. We know this is making the atmosphere and the oceans warmer, as you can see in these images where red is warmer than long-term averages and blue areas are colder. Other than noticing a lot more red than blue in this succession of years, you also probably notice the darker reds at the top and bottom of the maps, that is, closer to the poles. On average, the higher latitudes near the poles are warming much faster than the lower latitudes where more people live. It still gets very cold at the poles. The sun goes down because of the regular seasonal cycle, and when it goes down, the surface of the earth cools down, and then as the energy is transported up from lower latitudes, this cold pool is displaced, and it can be displaced earlier, and it can be displaced further away from the poles. This frigid pool of air can then end up in places like your neighborhood that aren't used to feeling it. So even though the driving force is that the planet is warming, some places, for some periods of time, can get colder than they would have before. In our climate-changing world, variability is also increasing. We can expect more freaky weather. And at times, that means cold, even colder than average. That's part of the reason we prefer climate change to global warming, since the changes aren't just experienced as warming. Still, these are global changes. When you start to look at larger spatial scales, and when you start to look at times of a decade, then what you see is a definitive signal that the globe is warming. So your backyard, hot or cold, is no more important to the climate equation than what happens to a patch of deserted land in Siberia. And neither one is too important if you just look at days, weeks, or months. Consider that the continental United States, the lower 48, makes up only about 1.6% of the Earth's surface. The other 98.4% of the planet is having their own weather right now, which could be very different from ours. In spite of that, opinion polling for years has shown that Americans' awareness and concern about climate change rise and fall based on how hot it is during our summers and how cold our winters are. We realize in climate science that these extreme and local events are actually symptoms of climate change and not the negation of it. And we can expect more extreme local events as carbon dioxide increases. But has this happened before? So the Earth's climatological record does show periods of warming and carbon dioxide accumulation. However, the human component that we're seeing now with carbon dioxide emissions into our atmosphere and our recent trends in warming have never been seen in our Earth's history ever before. The 800,000 year record has never seen carbon dioxide nearly this high or rising anywhere near this fast. And that climate changed future can temporarily, in spots, even be very cold.